everyone, Gemma Hatz here, author of the Adventurers series, and it's the first anniversary of my third book, The Adventurers and the City of Secrets, so I thought I'd give you a reading from the very first chapter. Chapter 1, Detention. One of life's great mysteries is whether detention is a bigger punishment for the student or the teacher. Of course you had to get yourself in detention on the very last day of term scolded Mr. Rotten to the small boy in front of him. I could be starting my Christmas holidays right now, but no, I'm spending my late afternoon with you. Mr. Rotten looked as pleased as someone who had been sprayed in the face by a skunk. It is rotten luck, Mr. Rotten, said Rufus Kexley, leaning back in his chair and staring up at the ceiling. As if I've never heard that one before, and luck has nothing to do with it. What are you in for this time? Mr. Rotten picks up a report from his desk and read it aloud. A Rufus Kexley detention report. Using a creative writing lesson to write a poem about farts. Hijacking the school's tannoy speakers to read the above poem aloud. Impersonating a pirate. Arr, me matey, interrupted Rufus, jumping onto his chair and making farting sounds with his armpit. Sit down. Mr. Rotten glared at Rufus, then continued reading. Impersonating a pirate whilst reading the above poem to the entire school during lunch, pretending to be the star of a new reality TV show. I call it keeping up with the Kexleys. I call it a ridiculous way to get yourself in detention. There's more. Exploding Daisy Dunsley's science project. Hey, protested Rufus, that was an accident. Daisy is in the year above with your cousin. You shouldn't have even been in the same classroom. Rufus folded his arms and sighed. Flying three toy drones into the school corridors, marking the numbers one, two and four onto the sides of the drones, which led staff to spend two hours looking for a number three drone, which did not exist. Rufus erupted into laughter at the memory, clutching his sides. This is not funny. Using music class to... Mr. Rotten pushed the lengthy list of Rufus's misdeeds across the desk. Oh, enough of this, I'm bored already. Why did you do these things? And more to the point, why did you do them all on the last day of term when I'm stuck with detention duty? It's entertainment, explained Rufus. And entertainment is art. No artist should be punished for their work. Art? spluttered Mr. Rotten, scrunching his nose. Where did you hear that nonsense? Look, Rufus, I know the other kids all enjoy a joke, but where are they now, eh? They're all at their homes, which is where I should be. At the other kids' homes? Yeah, no, of course not, at my home. Mr. Rotten's face was turning pink. Nobody gets expelled in the first term of secondary school here at Swindlebrook, but you're heading that way in your second term if this behaviour continues. Expelled? Ruth swallowed hard. I can't get expelled. Auntie Sarah would send me back to my grandparents. They're getting on a bit now, so they might send me to live in Hollywood with my mum. And she's a disaster. Mr. Rotten, I can't get expelled. Boo-hoo, stared Mr. Rotten, wiping his eyes. Tell someone who cares. All I know is that I will not waste any more of my after-school hours sitting here with you when I could be at home watching reruns of Columbo. So, get your act together, or you're out. An hour later, Rufus hung his head as he got into the back seat of his aunt's car. Barney, his cousin's border collie, sensed his low spirits and showered him with licks. What a way to start the Christmas holidays, said Mrs Jacobs, furrowing her eyebrows as she steered the car out of the almost empty school car park. We need to have a serious talk about your behaviour, Rufus. You can't keep getting into trouble. I know, murmured Rufus. No more pranks. At school, anyway. Lara turned and scowled at her cousin from the front passenger seat. Or at home. I would cancel our trip tomorrow if Tom wasn't already on the train from Cornwall, said Mrs Jacobs. You don't really deserve to go to the awards lunch, Rufus. Mum, gasped Lara open-mouthed, but I still deserve to go. None of you should really be going, said Mrs Jacobs, shaking her head. It's only been a couple of months since you all took off to Egypt without my knowledge and got yourselves into a very dangerous situation. We did find a massive loot of treasure, though, 
said Rufus, rubbing his hands together. That doesn't make it right, Rufus. I must be mad allowing the three of you back together. Four, corrected Lara. Barney's coming tomorrow. Well, Logan and Dee aren't here, so we haven't got a plane to take off anywhere, said Rufus, staring out of the window and daydreaming about the time when they arrived at the airport in the middle of the night to travel to Cairo. Where is Uncle Logan anyway? asked Lara. He's in America with Dee, pitching for a new TV series with some executives, and I'm sticking around for this school holiday to keep an eye on you, so there will be no more adventures. So that's chapter one of The Adventurers and the City of Secrets. It's out in paperback, ebook, and audiobook. The audiobook is read by Kieran Sword, much better than how I read it. So check those out, and if you'd like to stay in touch with me, do sign up to my website newsletter. You can access it at www.gemmahat.com and you'll receive a free Adventurers activity pack. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified when I release more videos. That's about all for now. Happy adventuring! ...of the Adventurers series, and today is the 7th of April, 2000... Stop drilling! Ugh. For detention on the very last day of term. Oh! nothing to do with it. What are you in for this time? I'm just gonna start again.